all websites need a secondary call to action. Your primary call to action is buy my services, buy my stuff. The secondary call to action is for those that aren't quite ready yet, but maybe in the future. The best secondary call to action is having a newsletter sign up on your website so that they can decide to stay engaged with you, but not buy yet. And then you can keep in contact with them month after month until they're ready to make that purchase. So what we use is we use Elementor Pro with MailChimp to create our signup form. The beautiful thing about this is that it is native to Elementor Pro to connect to MailChimp. You don't need any extra plugins. It's all built together with a few um, simple setup steps. So in this email today, I'm gonna to walk you through how to actually connect and integrate Elementor Pro inside WordPress with MailChimp so that you can create your newsletter signup form and get more people to sign up for your newsletter so that you can make more sales. Let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start in MailChimp. We need to get our API key in order to grab that and put it into WordPress. So first, to get that API key, you're gonna click on your profile in the bottom corner, um, the icon for your profile. Click on profile. And then your API key sits in extras. And then I have a key created here for something else. So I'm gonna create a new key. And this is the one that I just created. I'm gonna grab that completely. Make sure you go all the way over. Hit copy. And then we're actually gonna come in to Elementor. And then um, inside of Elementor, you're gonna click on Elementor and then Settings. And then inside of Settings, you're gonna click on Integrations. And then you're gonna scroll down and you're going to copy and paste the API key in here. I have a different API key in here for something else because it is my live site. So just assume I copied and pasted in that. And then you click on validate the API key and you wanna get that check mark. Now we're ready to um, add MailChimp to your newsletter form. So you're gonna come back up here Go to your pages. Now I've already created a page that has a simple newsletter form on it called Contact Form MC. I'm going to edit my page with Elementor. And here's my form. A little bit of a signage. My, all my other stuff is already here. So this is part of the design and development inside of WordPress with, with Elementor Pro that we're not gonna cover today. So hover over and you'll get a um, edit symbol here for the form. And then now you'll see your form come up on the side. Name, email, um, that is all set here. And now come down to actions after submit. Right now it's collect submission and email. That's the default. I'm gonna take out email because I don't wanna get an email every time I get a form, but now you'll see that um, MailChimp is down here. Click on MailChimp. And then when I do that, I now get a MailChimp section. So now I'm going to um, update this section. So API key is the default. Audience, now you need to select your audience from within MailChimp. Um, so if you're in mail, usually you only have one. Me, I've got quite a few. So I'm selecting my marketing masterminds, right? So it pulled it in from MailChimp to um, give me a selection of my different audiences. Um, if you have group set up, you can assign anybody that sets this up to a group or to tags. I always like to tag them as newsletter, um, but you could put website, um, newsletter website if you want to segment them out for future use. So think about what you're going to do with these folks a little bit. You can always come back and add tags later. Double opt-in, I always have set to yes. And then field mapping. So email is always required. If you're collecting additional information, what you want to do is make sure that in 
MailChimp, you have all your field settings mapped. And so let me show you what that looks like. So for your specific audience, I'm gonna come to audiences, Click on the audience. Settings. Audience fields and merge tags. So you'll see that I have email address, which is always considered required and visible. And then I have first name as a text field and that's formatted correctly. But let's say you want to add last name. So I can actually come in here, add a new field. It's text-based. Give it a title. Visible. You can decide to make something required. I'm going to follow the nomenclature and then make sure you hit save. So now that I know my fields are mapped, I can then, if I want to, I can add a last name field um, to the form, but just make sure that those fields are set up in there. Once that's done, you're gonna hit publish. I'm just saving this as a draft because I don't want it to go live, but once you publish your page, you wanna test it right? Make sure it's going to where you want to, because like I said, I set up double opt-in, but maybe you didn't have double opt-in set up on the MailChimp side. So the rule of thumb is if you set it up inside the form, you got to make sure it's set up inside of MailChimp. And to set up your double opt-in inside of MailChimp, is inside of settings and the audience name and campaign default. And you click on the enable double opt-in and enable recapture so that you're not getting spammed emails inside of your MailChimp newsletter system. So make sure you test it. And then once you're done, you're ready to go.